All right, guys. Um, today, what we're going to do is um, we're going to draw reference from you know comic book faces, and uh, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks um, how to use the Loomis method and uh, the Richard uh, Shepard technique in drawing figures. At the same time, we're going to start with. Um, so far, I've, I've done a video on uh, gesture drawing and figure drawing, but this time what we're going to do is we're going to actually start building it up with uh, the uh, the technique. And yeah, this is, um before I go on, this is a book I had for a very, very, very long time by Tom Alvarez, um, How to Draw, How to Create Action Fantasy and Adventure Comics. Um, and uh, Tom Alvarez did, you know, stuff for it like DC and Marvel. So, yeah, we're going to do a couple of poses here. We might do uh, some of these techniques, which they're pretty simple. They're not that uh, complicating. Um, pretty much about, you know, the proportions of the body. And, of course, I will show you some things um how to draw heads the way alvarez would do it so as you can see these are all gestures and the action line figures and uh this is pretty much the process by building it up with shapes But I'm going to show you an easier way how to tackle this. You can see everything starts with a gesture, the line of action, the center line is what makes your figure. Um, get different poses, any poses that you want. Give me a minute, guys. Um, Got to do something for a second. Hold on a second. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start on the figure first. Okay, so let's say, um, let's do this, and I'm going to show you how he does this. And then I'm going to show you another way how we can do this pose also. So I'm going to give you some alternatives how to do these poses. And I'm going to use my red pencil. And very simple, I'm just going to do the center of the body, which is the gesture line, okay? And uh, what I usually do, I usually start with the torso first, okay? Then here would be the hip, right? So um, Alvarez, you know, he does something just like the regular Marvel Comics um, stick figure. And if you want, you can get your action figure, your six inch action figure to help you out to understand how the body moves. So I'm going to do pretty much what, you know, Tom Alvarez does when he does uh, the gesture. So I usually leave the head for last. Okay, so I'm going to make this a little darker so you could um, get the idea how this works. Make this a little bit bigger. And then, I mean, you don't really have to do, you know, uh, these uh, cylinder shapes. Of course, um, 
these cylinder shapes are sort of like the the sockets of where the legs are going to come out so if you want you can do it like that which i'm going to show you uh, uh, pretty much so i'm going to do that a different color so you get the idea so it's sort of like sockets that comes out like this and then after that once you do the sockets you could start um, doing pretty much like the outline of the figure. So you sort of like visualize the outline. Of the figure and then you just connect it from the torso all the way down the outline and then you just keep going. until you get pretty much your whole figure done. And I know most people have trouble drawing foreshortening and uh, the way I would probably do this is like, I would start better the front part of the leg first and then just work my way back. Okay, that's the way I would do it. And then the foot, I would do like a flat surface like this <clears throat> and then do the shape of the foot and then make it look you know dimensional because the foot is coming at us okay so after i do the uh you know the outline i'm gonna start working with the cylinder shapes And there we go. So all you have to do is um, start working, you know, fleshing it out. You know, you give your figure more, more like an organic look. You want to make it look even though in comics you can get away with certain things because in real life not everybody has a lot of muscles now this is sort of like an image of spider-man of course you know if you look at it it's just it's almost like spider-man in a way you know the same pose the same spider-man pose um you don't see any webbings um so i don't know why he i guess this is his own character um it looks like pretty much like those wrestling um, characters in the wrestling match. So I think that's what he intended to do. So um, usually Spider-Man, the, the Spider-Man pose, you know, or Spider-Man himself is more like a slender, but he does have some type of muscles. Um... On the other hand, this character, he's got muscles, but it's, you know, it's not, um, it's not Spider-Man. It's a, it's a different type of character that this guy, uh, created. So once you sort of like tackle in pretty much the gesture and the forms, and then you can start you know, uh, sketching it and make it look more organic, like make it look, you know, give it more body, you know, so give it curve, you know, um, start giving it more details on the muscles here, usually in the bottom crotch area where the buttocks is, it's sort of like a, it's more rounder and, and it follows like a curve. So let me show you pretty much like you see over here and then this leg here, if you look at it, you know, you visualize it as an oval shape. Okay, so once you do the outline, you could do several things. You can actually visualize a, 
an oval shape to do that leg and then the kneecap you give you know the kneecap you got to give it form you know so um the calf of the leg you you know you give it curve and you make it look organic okay so i'm not going to do the costume design so i'm just gonna you know show you pretty much how you build him up okay so what we're focusing today is doing it the way tom alvarez does it but at the same time you know building the figure okay so that's what's important okay now let's do this the way um george uh, sorry not george romero um abdon romero does by using his technique i'm going to do it the way he does it to see if it's much better so so far i showed you the way tom alvarez does it so romero um We'll do it several ways. And first, let me show you how Romero does his gestures. Um, sometimes he'll work with the, you know, the center line, right? And then he'll uh, do another ball shape for the hip area. Then he'll do pretty much the balance line. Okay. The reason why you need to do the balance line, because that is known to be the line of action. Okay. So you know, um, he'll do somewhat, you know, either the shape or he'll do the line of the leg. Starting from where underneath the balance line, he'll do another line, sort of like a gesture line for the leg. Now, sometimes I've seen him uh, do pretty much like the shape of the leg and then he'll do the line so that's the way Romero does you know his his gestures for his figures um, and believe it or not Romero uh, draws very very comic book style so so his uh, technique um, is really um, effective it does work okay so um, Another way of doing this also, you could do it pretty much like this. You're doing sort of like the hint of the torso, right? And then here's the balance line. And let's look at this and let's study this. See the balance. If, if you want, you can get a plastic and, you know, review it with a marker like I usually do sometimes. You, you figure out the line of action, you know, just by using a plastic and a marker and figure out how the body works, okay? So you could do it that way, you know. But since, you know, we're working with pencil now, so we're actually seeing, you know, we're gonna use uh, pretty much the black pencil and we'll figure out things, how it works, okay? So, you can do pretty much the shape like this. This will be the bottom part. And you can actually uh, do like an oval shape for that part of the leg. Okay. Uh, here's the frontal part, the foreshortening. And if you want to make it more simple to understand, you can actually see the, the foreshortening like the foreground. So this part of the leg would be the foreground of your figure. Okay, so here's the foot. And then you can do another, you know, socket there, right? And if you want, you can do a line coming out. Or you can do the form. It really doesn't matter. As long as you get the proportions correct. Okay. Um, and then, of course, this leg goes back. Uh, somebody asked me um, if I can do, which I will do, 
like you know figures fighting or you know in action or all together in a rumble fight or something yeah i know i could do that um but it's going to take a little time to explain all that what we're focusing is drawing you know the techniques in different poses that's what we're going to focus okay later on i i promise i will continue uh to do you know fighting things you know uh, figures all together all in one fighting whatever so yeah we're gonna do that but what the most important thing is drawing the figure in different poses okay so that's what we're gonna focus on okay so you know you know little by little we'll do a lot of stuff you know so it's not um it's gonna take a little bit a lot of explaining when you're doing you know fighting scenes and you know, dramatic scenes and action scenes, especially when you have three characters, you know, involved with each other in a in a fight or something. So, um, yeah, I will do that. And I'm going to make it a little bit simple for you to understand by doodling and scribbling, uh, just like I've shown you on the other video. Um, yeah, we're going to focus with that. Okay, so... Um, now I always, like always leave the head for last, just like every method that I use, I always leave the head for last. Okay. So you always gotta, you know, map out pretty much what you're going to draw the figure that you're going to do. Okay. You always have to map it out. You always have to plan it in a way. You know plan your pose you know and like i did in the other video you you practice by doodling you know you doodle scribble in the different poses that you want to do you know you pick the ones that you want you know that's how it is in in comics sometimes you know you want to you plan out if you want you get your six inch toy figure and pose him and um, do all kinds of poses and then draw it, you know, doodling, you know, like the, a dummy drawing. And then if you like the one that you did before, you might want to use it. And maybe the other one that you did, um, you might want to use it for something else. So, you know, it's always good to plan out. And that's how many comic book artists actually do this. They plan out the poses okay so um so far what i could do now is you know start giving him uh more like an organic you know pose make him look a little bit more realistic Okay, so I'm not going to do the uh, costume design. I'm just focusing more on how the figure functions. Okay, so that's the most important thing. Okay. Now you also, um, let's try another pose and um, let's try out this pose. And what we're going to do is we're going to use another paper. Okay. And we'll try this with a red pencil. So. I'll start with the, you know, the gesture line. And the torso. Um, the balance line. the oval for the hip balance line for the torso the arms but before i do the arms i want to work with the legs so remember even if you're doing reference it may not come out especially when it comes to figure drawing it may not come out the same like the pose that you're drawing. So everything has to do with a lot of practice. That's the same thing when you're drawing a face. 
it may not come out the same. So um, you always got to keep that in mind. Okay. So I'm going to make this a little darker so you can see pretty much the skeletal part of the body. <clears throat> So I think I exaggerated too much the torso. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. And then the head is sort of like tilted in a way. Okay. And then this arm. Uh, you can see that he didn't do the proportions that good here. What he should have done was um, he should have just did the, you know, the shoulder. And of course, this is like a three-quarter view. Remember that this pose is a three-quarter view. This shoulder seems to be more bigger and this shoulder seems to be smaller. Okay, so this is like a three-quarter uh, view pose. But what he should have done was since this arm is, you know, uh, more like foreshortened, he should have made this a little bigger and he should have made the hand a little bigger. I don't know why uh, he made it small. Um... But I'm going to do it a, a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start with this arm first. And I usually like to do the forearm before I start with the back arm. You know, like the this part of the arm, which I forgot the name. I, 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 would, I would say where the shoulder is. So I like to start better with um, the forearm. And the same thing I'm going to do on this side. So I got to remember that this is big. And this is smaller. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do part of the arm, right? And uh, this arm is going to be foreshortened, of course, but it's going to be more, you know, bigger. Okay. Because it's foreshortening. I could actually visualize this if I want as a, a cylinder shape. My hand would come out this way and okay, so what I'm going to do now is instead of doing, you know, the shapes, I could, you know, just do work with it from the top. Little by little, you know, just work yourself, you know, work slow. Don't, you know, don't uh, rush because that's how you make mistakes. Um, So this is a hint of the hand right there. Then I'm going to work with this arm and the forearm here. Give it more, you know, roundness to the uh, forearm here. And I think uh, I did that hand too big, but that's just only the gesture. So I could just always fix that. Sinuses are driving me insane. So, just in case, bear with me. I have sinus problems. I think we all do have allergies and sinus problems. But it's really annoying. I hate these... Uh, Nasal sinus problems, it's crazy. So, anyway, going back to this, since this is a three-quarter view, I have to realize that this chest here is going to be viewed as less, okay? And you see more uh, of the chest on this side 
and the rib cage you're going to see less here and you're going to see more rib cage here okay and as i work my way down on the figure you know i'm doing pretty much the organic shape of my figure so you know um the leg comes out this way all right and uh, if you notice that the crotch is down here and you can see like the underwear shape so you could visualize this as a socket okay uh over here you can see like a cylinder shape and it's very round very oval shape so in a way you could actually visualize this as an oval shape to get that whole effect so that's what i'm going to do but before i do that i'm going to do the waist first and then visualize the oval shape but at the same time do the crotch so i'm doing the oval i'm drawing through but don't worry about it you can draw through very ghostly very lightly and you can actually do pretty much the um the v shape for the crotch area and then right here <clears throat> you do another oval you visualize this remember everything has to do with visual effect you're actually visualizing the um the form of the body okay so here i am going to do pretty much the um the shape of his leg here you know i'm giving it life in a way okay um here's a kneecap and then i can finish off this part of the leg here Like always, I'm not going to do, you know, the uh, character design. I'm just going to, you know, work with his body and add some muscles, you know, some biceps. And it's going to look, look, you know, classical because this guy, the way he draws is very classical. It's like very like John Buscema style or something. <clears throat> and, that, and believe it or not, that's the way John Buscema does his figures. Okay. So you don't have to necessarily do this process. If you want, you can do it that way. But I'm showing you an easier way with the line of action. It's it's more better. It's more practical. And it's, it's, it's really, uh, to me, it's effective. Okay. So as I'm going along, I'm going to do pretty much work with the biceps first. Right. And as I go down to the crotch area, um, I'm going to work with the biceps on his leg. Okay. And the uh, biceps on the bottom near the kneecap here also. All right. So. So I, I pretty much have. <coughs> excuse me. What I'm looking for. All right. I pretty have you know, pretty much have the shape of the anatomy down packed, you know. Then I got to finish off his foot. And I got to make it look three dimensional because this foot here, that's in front right here, is foreshortened. And I want to make it look, you know, more like three dimensional kind of, okay. This one, this foot is more flat. But I still, you know, got to make it look like a foot. So I don't want to, you know, just get away and just draw it flat. No, I got to make it look like a foot. So I'm going to keep working uh, straight down to his foot. Here's his heel. No, actually, this is the heel. I forgot the name of this right here. But anyway, um, I'm going to give it more shape on his foot. Okay, so... That way, it looks like a foot right there. Okay. Now, what I could do is I'm going to give it more uh, a three-dimensional. And when I'm saying three-dimensional is because I'm adding cast shadow. 
and cast shadow is what makes your face and your figure look three-dimensional okay now I sound like a I know I sound like a broken record uh, repeating this but you have to I have to repeat this because this is the only way and Romero does it all the time in Spanish in his videos he repeats it all the time that you need to um, do cast shadow and planes and uh, a few or of organic uh, in your figure okay now I do need a lot of practice with you know cast shadow because he's the only one that really knows what he's doing when it comes to a cast shadow okay so and like always I'm not a professional I'm a beginner like everybody else okay so um, if you know Spanish then you probably will enjoy uh, Romero's videos but there are times believe it or not that he will do uh, English and Spanish tutorials all at the same time okay so the thing with Romero is that he's more into realistic you know realistic and me I'm more into more like the comic book world but I do love you know realistic and I really do love um, you know the natural classical way of drawing that is why I'm a big admirer of uh, the great uh, Andrew Loomis, right? And, you know, George Bridgman. Even though, you know, on the George Bridgman books, I never seen any drawings, you know, finished drawings. I could be wrong. I don't know. I, I you know, maybe you guys could leave me in the comments because I don't have his books yet by George Bridgman. But... <clears throat> I never seen any um, realistic uh, drawings like Andrew Loomis by George Bridgman. Okay, uh, to me that really draws realistic and very very precise in his techniques is the great Andrew Loomis. There's no doubt in my mind. Very classical. Very. Um, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of innocence in his artwork, um, which you don't see that nowadays, um, you know, from the 19s. And, of course, Andrew Loomis came from the, those days back, you know, the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. Okay, so he was more realistic. And the way I see Loomis is peak. It's more like the great artist Caravaggio. I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, Caravaggio. Caravaggio was very, very realistic. And he was from the, uh, you know, the Middle Ages during, um, you know, Da Vinci times. I would say the best artist from way, way back is Leonardo da Vinci and at the same time uh, Caravaggio. To me, those were the best artists. I never, and I know, I'm not going to, you know, I hope I don't, you know, offend anybody because a lot of people love Michelangelo. But I think Michelangelo wasn't very good in drawing the anatomy. Um, the ones that were more realistic to me as an artist, um, I, I think, you know, Leonardo da Vinci was the best and uh, Caravaggio. And there was others also, you know, I mean, the um, Michelangelo was a great sculptor and that that's one thing I will give him credit, you know, but he wasn't very good drawing, you know, uh, figures. So I would say more the one that drew great figures would be more like um, um, Leonardo da Vinci and... Um, Carbaggio. Carbaggio was the best. So as you can see, I'm giving him, you know, more like a three-dimensional field uh, because of the cast shadow. And uh, when you're adding cast shadow, you're making your figure three-dimensional. You're actually impressing your viewer, you know, that it looks realistic in a way. 
And like I mentioned before, um, some editor told me once in New York uh, from Heavy Metal Magazine, he told me that um, you have to draw, you know, your scenes and your comic strips like a black and white movie. That's what it's all about, especially if you're working with, um, you know, um, black and white inking. Um, you have to make it look like a black and white film. And I think that's one of the reasons why I like classical, you know, black and white movies. Because you could actually see more of realism than color. Yeah, color is, is great. But I don't know, there's something about black and white that I really, really admire a lot, you know. So, so you know, <clears throat> there's all kinds of ways how you can deal with your drawings um, by... Um, doing black and white All right so I'm going to finish off his the bottom part of his leg and there you go uh, that's pretty much how you do uh, several techniques so let's go on we already did this one and the woman is the same thing let's let's draw this pose and uh, I'm going to keep this because it came out pretty good. So, and let me show you <clears throat> pretty much how Romero does his figures. This is something he sent me on a mail. Uh, and I, you know, have a lot of gratitude because this actually helped me out a lot figuring how to draw the figure. So this is pretty much how he does his gesture. And drawing the figure, whether it's, you know, comic book style um, for shortening. <clears throat> this one. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Oh, my God, this al allergy cold. It's just crazy. All right, this one, it took me a while to figure it out. So what I figured out that maybe he did something like this. He did pretty much the oval shape. And then the action line, which is sort of like the waistline, the line of action here. And then that's when he started forming pretty much the shape like this. Now, let me show you how he did this before we go on with the book. <coughs> My greatest guest, uh, Romero, uh, started with the head first. Because sometimes he'll start with the head first. Right, um, a hint of the shoulders, a hint of the rib cage, the gesture line, the line of action, which is actually the balance line, the waistline here. If you want, you can do, you know, gesture lines for the limbs if you want. But let's do it pretty much how he did it. So I'm guessing this is the way he did it. Then here's the outline. And then another outline here. But I noticed that this outline is a little bit higher. And the reason why for that is because he foreshortens this leg. And usually Romero would actually just draw. He doesn't use, you know, gesture line for the limbs, especially when it comes to perspective and foreshortening. So it's a, it's a whole different game here then he'll do a hint of the crotch area here <clears throat> so you could do it this way if you want you know um now i think my probably the way i did it here it was, it's just too far out so but then again you know when you're doing reference it's not going to be exactly the same the idea, you will get it, but it's not going to be exactly the same. So don't expect it to look the same.
So, you know, reference, it, it takes a lot of practice doing reference, uh, either figures or, or faces or heads, okay? So you could use, if you want, you know, you visualize spirals to do the, um, the perspective and the foreshortening of body. So in other hands, what he's doing here, which I'm going to just give you a better example, um, and I'm going to do just a regular stance. This is the torso, this is the balance line, and this is part of the the outside of the limbs. Sorry, um, where the limbs are going to come out, and of course the hip area. And here's the shoulders, and here's the head. And then he'll do pretty much like the crotch, right? And he'll do the rest of the limbs like this. But remember, when you're doing foreshortening, you want to actually capture this whole segment here. So that's the way he does it. Something like that. <coughs> Again, if you don't want to use these forms, you can do it this way. Okay, so you can actually, I'm going to do a little bit bigger this time. Okay, like that. crotch and then do the lines for the legs it, it's something like this but except that you're not using you know pretty much the oval shapes you're actually visualizing you know you're training your eye to see the shape of the body And then you do the, you know, the sockets for the, uh, the arms. <clears throat> and here's the head. <clears throat> I think I'm going to have to make myself some tea after I do this video. I will continue to do some more videos, but I definitely need to do some tea. <clears throat> It'll warm up my vocal cords and maybe I won't cough that much. Who knows? Drink some moringa tea and some turmeric tea or something. So see how the, you know, little by little, the figure is actually taking shape, you know. You know, you're starting with the gesture line, which is the center, and then the line of action, which is the balance line that actually holds your figure, okay? All this is going to hold your figure. Some people like to draw figures out of the blue moon, just like drawing it, like if they were seeing it. Those I would actually would consider more like real, real professionals, you know, that that have been drawing for years. But this is the, you know, the correct way of drawing the figure. <coughs> By using um, skeletal um, form, the gesture. Remember, the, skele the skeleton of the figure is like a gesture. It's what helps your figure come to life, okay? That's what's really important, okay? That's what's going to help you do pretty much any character that you want. Like, for example, this pose that I did, this whole figure, it could be Spider-Man, it could be Wolverine, it could be Captain America. It, you know, you just got to, you know, let your imagination take over.
Hey, if you want, you can, you know, do your own character if you want. It could be also Superman. But then again, Superman would be more of a bigger guy. You know, more muscular. Bigger, you know, rib cage, And more rounder. Um, around where the legs are, of course. And then the cape. And remember what I said about the cape? You got to make it flow. You got to give it more life. When you're doing the cape, you just don't want to draw a cape that's that looks flat. That's not going to work. Okay, never draw a cape that looks too flat. You want to give it life. You want to make it flow. You want to give it rhythm on the cape, all right? So that's the way it, you know, that's the way it's, it's supposed to be done, guys. <coughs> and then, you know, you do the logo, whatever, on his chest. I think he has like a belt here. Yeah. Because I can't remember by memory how Superman... I have an idea, you know, pretty much how Superman looks, of course, you know, but... Um, that's how it is, okay? All right, guys, I'm going to stop because uh, lately I've been having trouble doing videos and when especially long videos. So I'm going to shorten my videos and make the process a little shorter. That way I can continue with the next video. Well, thank you very much, guys, and give me your likes and, uh, you know, leave your comments. Tell me if this is actually going to work for you guys, and um, hopefully it will. Thank you.